Hello and welcome to Pure and True Essentials. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to get rid of sopash. So what is sopash? When unsaphonified light gets in contact with the carbon dioxide in the air, sopash forms. It usually forms on top of your soap and sometimes on the side. And this is how it will look when sopash forms. And this soap has a deep sopash. I made this on a very cold day and I had not taken the preventive measures that I should have taken. So some of the preventive measures are making sure your lye water and your oils are above 100 degree Fahrenheit. Having a medium trace before you pour your soap batter into your mold. Once you poured your soap batter, spray the top with isopropyl alcohol and then insulate it after which keep it in a warm place or a warm room. If your house is cold, keep the mold on a warming mat. Now that we looked at the preventive methods, how can we get rid of the soap ash? Some of the methods used to take the soap ashes, if the soap ash is thin, you can use a steamer to get rid of it. You can wash the soap Put your soap under running cold water and it'll get rid of your uh, uh, soap ash but i'm not a big fan of it because when i tried it once i saw fingerprints on it and i was not pleased with it and some soapers use soap shavers i personally think it's a waste because you're losing a lot of soap to it soap ash does not spoil or uh, degrade the quality of your soap bar so how do we get rid of it? I'm going to show that in this video. Without much delay, let's get started. You can all see the soda ash that is soap ash on top. First, I'm spraying it with distilled water. And now I'm spraying it with isopropyl alcohol. Meantime, I have already boiled some distilled water in a tea kettle. The water is boiling hot. You can see it's steaming. I'm pouring the hot distilled water on top. After letting it rest for a minute or two, I am going to dump the water in a sink and I'm going to bring it back. If your soap has soap ash only on top, you have to let this dry and repeat it if it's needed. For this loaf, I'm going to check if there's any soda ash around the sides. I don't see any soap ash on the soap, but to be safe, I'm going to repeat the same process. I think the bar looks a little ashy and grayish because I used charcoal in it. It might not be soda ash. I line the bottom with kitchen tissue paper so it can hold some of the distilled water and uh, the isopropyl alcohol. It's totally optional, you don't have to line it, but I just did it so the water does not run out um, on my counter. You can also use fabric, you can use uh, any kind of material that you think uh, you're comfortable with. You can also not use any, it's totally optional. Now we have to wait until the soap is dried and we'll come back. As you can see, the kitchen paper towel is dry and the loaf is dry, but I was not happy. So I'm going to again spray it with some isopropyl alcohol and with some distilled water. This time I'm not going to do the hot water bath after which I'm going to dry and repeat it if I'm not happy.
After the second spray, I was happy with the result, so I let it dry and you can see the before and after pictures and judge it for yourself. So now it's uh, the next day and I'm cutting the loaf. Let's see how it's in the inside. So like I told you before, when we started um, treating the soap for ash, that it was kind of ashy. I think it's because of the charcoal I used in the soap. When I cut it, you can see the inside is kind of gray and ashy. It's because of the charcoal. So I'm gonna let this dry for two or three days and see if there's going to be any ash on the sides that's freshly cut. If there's going to be any ash, I'm going to repeat the process that I showed you. After a week, I checked these bars and they looked perfect. There was no soap ash on these bars. Mm. It smells good. <laughs> If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share and also visit my other social media platforms.